All right, guys, so I'm going to do a little video here. Hopefully, uh, go over on how to use a laser level or how I do it. This might not be the correct way, but it's worked for me. So what we're doing today, we got a kind of swell in this parking lot. Uh, it'll drain into that inlet structure. So uh, what we got to do, we got to set the laser up and find out where our swell stops. So let's just get with it. I don't know if these things overwhelm some people or not. Uh, there's really nothing to them. If you're in an excavating business, I, I, it's just really hard to do without one of these things, man. I don't know how people do it, but anyway, I'm going to show you guys how I do it. And this is kind of, this is on a commercial job. You don't, well, we were eating plans in tents, so you really don't have to, uh, on residential work, you wouldn't really have to have a tenth rod. You can use an inches rod. And I'll show you the difference here in a minute. But uh, what I want to do when I'm setting my laser up, I want it to be able the laser I want the laser to be able to see or shoot without any obstructions. It'll go 360 degrees. But let's say I wanted to shoot a point on the side of this building and work this area. I would need to set it somewhere up here out of the way. I'm wanting to shoot the side of the building over here and this area right here. So we're going to set it right over there. Sorry for the shaky video. I'm doing this on my phone. So I'll set the tripod up, set the laser up, and we will uh, kind of show you what we got going on. Now that we've got I'm sorry, now that we've got our laser set on our tripod and it's it's somewhat level here, this laser will actually self-level. Uh, so we turn it on, it's gonna go through its self-leveling process. Uh, when it starts spinning, we'll know it's ready to go. We're gonna take our grade rod and our receiver here and go over here and shoot our benchmark. Uh, benchmark is just an on point on the job uh, that, that you know the elevation feet above sea level uh, for our benchmark we are going to use the finished floor of this building so let's go over there and find our finished floor looks like we're uh, strobing over there our place is turning so let's go over here and find our finished floor all right guys as soon as jordan gets out of the way and the laser can shoot our target we see here there we our benchmark which is our finished floor here is it three foot nine tenths and three one hundredths so that's three uh, foot nine tenths and three one hundredths so we know everything and every measurement that we are taking today is going to be based off of this benchmark which is the known point so we know um that floor is 659 so we'll base everything off 659 and i'll show you how i know that um I just mean for this to be an informative video, just kind of something different from the norm of just watching equipment run. If you've never done anything like this before, it's good to learn. Uh, normally, most jobs, I mean, if you're doing residential work, you can get by with using an inches rod, which is just, um, my numbers are wore off, but that's one feet, two feet, you know, and there's, there's all your increments there. Inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, inch and three quarters. We're using a tenth rod. Tenth rod is really used just to simplify things. Uh, a tenth is usually, if you set, I don't have a tape measure here, but if you set it up, a tenth is around, as you can tell, about an inch and a quarter. There's an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, inch and three quarters, two inches. So, um, a tenth is done like this. You have, we'll start with the two here. The one above that is a tenth. There's two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths. Then of course, three, which is a foot, 10 tenths and a foot. Between that, you have the hundreds. So right here, you would have two tenths, two tenths, one one hundred. Then the bottom of the next line will be two tenths, two, three, four, five, six. 
that's half, seven, eight, nine, and then there's your uh, one tenth. So there's 10 one hundredths and a tenth, 10 tenths and a foot. So it just simplifies things a little bit. I hope that made sense. Here's our finished floor elevation. As you can see on our plans, it's 659. What we are doing here is we are creating a swell from this drop inlet all the way up here. The swell will fall at 1%. Well, my grade line shows me that I've got a 658 finished grade here. All right. 658 finished grade means that's finished. That's asphalt, dense grade, everything. We are not doing finished grade. We need to be nine inches below that because this uh, lot is calling for six inches of dense grade base, two inches of binder, and one inch of wearing layer. So six plus two plus one is nine. So what's nine inches in tenths? Nine inches in tenths is 0.75. So what I need to do is take the number away here from 658, which would leave me a 657.25, all right? 657.25 is the number that I'm looking for on my grade rod to show me my grade. So, let me show you how we do that. To go up, you go down. To go down, you go up on a grade rod. Which makes sense, of course, because you want your target, you want your grade rod to go down to shoot a lower grade, you need your target to go up on the stick. So. What I like to do normally, just so I don't forget, and I don't think I have my pen here. I think I left it at home. Normally you'd write it down in a field book, but I don't have a field book today, so. What I normally do is I'll take my little pen here, marker, pencil, whatever, and I'll just make me a little mark right here to let me know that's my home. That's where we go back to every time, so I don't forget. Cause I'm bad to forget, guys. I'm getting 40 years old. I know your memory gets worse as you get older. I'm not gonna be worth the crap when I get older, so. All right, so we need to go to 657.25. How much of difference is there in 659 and 657.25? Did you get the answer faster than me? The correct answer to that is one foot, seven tenths, five one hundredths difference. So I need to move my rod up, or my target up one foot, seven tenths five one hundredths all right guys so we started right here at our benchmark which is three foot nine tenths four one hundred so we moved it up a foot to four to four foot five four foot nine tenths four one hundredths then we moved it up seven tenths and five one hundredths to get our 1.75 i hope i made sense for that i know i probably didn't anyway so now we know this is what our grade's got to be. And I can kind of check this because I think, if I'm not, I have to look on my plans. We got to be pretty close to this right here. And I was right. We're, we're within a tenth off. That's the same elevation that this, this, this has got to be. So I know I'm pretty right from yesterday. We're not, we're not far off at all. So let's go out here. Let's go out here and check Mr. Jordan's swell. His swell should stop somewhere around the corner or the middle of this parking lot extension. Or parking lot right there. So he's got to go. He's got to go down a good bit. In fact, his dirt pile set right in the way. So we'll have him push all this dirt over there, or I'll move with the skid steer. So all this has got to come down just a little bit. Let's talk to him about it. And see what this thing does it just slopes up to the parking lot everything drains into this box from right here that's the entrance then we got another box down there let's get him out of here for a minute
You're almost there, old son. I'm teaching YouTube how to use a laser. He must be on the phone. Oh, and I must almost fail. Yeah. Yeah. About the middle of your dirt pile. Is it shows where the swell actually starts. So I'm gonna say somewhere. Let's walk around this bush here. If we had GPS, we'd be set up because we just have somebody build a model. We'll stick it in the machine, and they would uh, they it would do it all for us. So you don't like much, man. Is that about how far I need to come? Yeah, about right here. So you're about what? Six inches. Yeah. I, I go along about to what I have going. This is where the 658 line is. Okay. And then it rises from here. So I'd, I'd start it right here. Uh -huh. Oh. So anyway, we got him set up. And some of you may ask, why are you guys cutting a swell in a parking lot after you've all got it kind of upgraded in? Well, here's the fact. The way this thing's laid out, and all that water's running into this box, we had to wait like a month and a half on our concrete structures to get here. So I didn't want water sitting in the parking lot in a hole right there. So we made the parking lot where it would drain, come back, cut the swell out. Is it more work? Yes. Did it save us time? Yeah, probably. I don't know. Um, it sure would have been sort of sucked to have to dig around all that wet stuff and try to get it compacted back and all that. So what we're going to do is uh, those structures actually, there's rocks surrounding them things. I think the water should leach through, through the rock and go down to the other ones. That's in theory. When you're doing jobs like this, you can't really control all that, every aspect. Um, sometimes these things just have to be left open. It is freaking raining. So, anyway, let me get off here, guys. I just wanted to kind of give you a rundown of a laser level, uh, how to use one, how to set up a, a point. If you're doing these jobs with, like, like residential jobs, you can just kind of, you know, if you know how high your pad's going to be, you just set it where your laser will see the pad, set your height, you know, off, make you a stake or something out, uh, the height you want, set your laser up to that. And, uh, and go from there. They're really not hard to use. And if you're in the excavating business, I mean, it's just a must have, man. It's, it's save you so much time. Um, not to mention just actually looking more professional. Um, I mean, they're not very expensive. This setup here, the, the uh, tripod, the level the grade rod and the target i mean uh, one just like this is around 800 bucks on amazon this thing will also do what they call slope matching so i could go out here actually i could have set this thing to where i wanted my slope to start and end and, and tilt it down and actually be able to cut a slope it would it would tilt the laser beam one way or another the cut slope it's very a very neat feature you can get one of them more advanced that'll actually do a slope on the x and y axis and you can punch it in the the uh the head here you can do a two percent one percent if i wanted to do a one percent slope i could have set that thing up and said hey i want to do one percent slope and it would uh it would do it but anyway i use the slope function all the time on this thing but we didn't really need it today because we kind of know where we're ending and starting so uh anyway all right, guys, I hope this has helped somebody. Like I said, I kind of want to do some more videos that aren't just pushing dirt and rock around, you know. I mean, um, I know when I was trying to learn this, I looked for videos, and uh, I learned a little bit from my previous jobs, but, you know, um, 
maybe maybe this video will help someone if you don't own one of these things and you're intimidated to get one don't be they're not they're not hard to learn at all uh, it's not like you're out here setting up a 3d system with a gps you know with a base station and a rover and data collector and all that and got to know all your control points and whatnot i mean this is nothing like that this is very elementary simple uh tool to use so if jordan can use it anybody can right jordan yeah if i can use it anybody can i was just explaining how it works how to use a laser level did you explain how it slowed for all that yeah isn't that a cool feature and my brand is a Topcon. I don't know if it says it on there. RLH5A Topcon. And they're like 800 bucks, I think, for the whole thing. Dewalt makes them now. Yeah, Dewalt makes one. Uh, Leica um, makes one. Um, Bosch. Bosch makes one. Um, you have to be careful. But, S. Uh, what is the S one? I know. Just I know Leica. Yeah, it's, like, it's like that tall. Like a... Um, but anyway, top cone's the best, so that's all it matters. You might ruffle some feathers there. Now, if you're going to buy one, I do suggest buying a good one. I mean, you can buy one from Lowe's or Home Depot if you're not doing a lot. But the thing about those is, I don't know, can you get them recalibrated if you bump them or whatever? I don't know. Anyway, I uh, bought I'm mine. I'm sure you can. Um, good thing about this is if you need it recalibrated, you can just run it to Birmingham. Yeah. I run it to my local dealer, Topcon dealer, and they can actually reset it and recalibrate it and do all that. So I think it's worth spending just a few hundred extra and buying a, a good name brand um, level, Topcon or Leica or um, good grief, what's that other one? I know it as well as I know my own name. It's like one of them by Trimble, I think, does one of them. I can maybe tremble. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. All right, guys. I'm about to run out of time. Thanks for watching this video. And me and George are going to get back to work.